G'day guys, Justin from Battleforge Gaming here, and welcome to what is the first of a long format tutorial on how to paint chapters of Space Marines. Today we'll be working on a Space Wolf. Hopefully you find this tutorial useful. If you do, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Before you prime your model, I thought I would just show you the sub-assemblies I paint my well, model in. So throughout this video, you will see these parts all separated. This just makes painting a lot easier and you can access all the areas. So I highly recommend doing this step. The first step is to prime your model with gray seer, like this. As you can see, it's a little bit of a dusting. We're not trying to cover the whole model with the primer. After it is dry, we're going to add a base coat of rust gray. The brush I'm using for this step is the small dry brush, and this paint is thinned down a little bit. So all you're going to do is apply this over the whole armor. This will take probably two coats. You want to move relatively quick when you're painting this. And you don't want to paint on an area that is half dry because you'll start to get clumpy paint. So I will finish base coating this guy. I'll do the two coats and then we will come back and show you what it looks like. So after the three coats of rust gray are dried, we are going to start blocking in some colors. For this, we have started to put it into sub-assemblies. And the first color we're going to apply is Abaddon Black to the armored undersuit of the model. That's areas such as this under here and the gaps in between the legs down here and here. This will require two coats of Abaddon Black to get a nice crisp black and we will be using a small artificial layer brush to do this step. All you're going to do is be very careful to just fill these areas in. Don't worry if you make a mistake. You can just go back with your rust gray and tidy it up. I will go around the whole model and fill these little areas in and we'll come back and show you what it will look like once you have filled them in. With the black applied, this is what your model should look like. I'll show you the other bits after this. There's a little bit of spillage, as you can see, up on the belt there. We're not too concerned with that because we need to paint the belt. And like I said, you just go back with the Fenrisian and Gray and do touch-ups. The arms should just look like this. So there's not too much black on that. And the arm with the chainsaw, like this. And finally, just the armored undersuit on the head. The next color we're going to apply is Wraithbone. Now this is going to be in preparation for the yellow we're going to put on the models. So we're going to apply it on the inset of this shoulder pad. And traditionally, Space Wolf weapons are painted black, but we're going to paint ours yellow. So we will paint these areas yellow on the chainsaw as well as the gun casing here. So I'll be using a small artificial layer brush. And this may take two or three coats just to get it to cover, as you can see. But be patient, apply those two, three coats, let them dry. And I will come back and show you what it looks like. So after three coats of Wraithbone, this is how your gun casing should look. Now we're going to apply Yeriel yellow to the same areas. This will probably take two to three coats as well. 
you want to thin down the yellows so they don't finish with a, a chalky effect. And simply just going to apply the yellow over the whole wraith bone area. I will complete these and we will come back and show you what it looks like. So with three coats of Uriel yellow, this is what your yellow should look like. The next step, we're going to be taking Mephiston red and again using our small artificial Soleil brush and we are going to block in this circle on the backpack and the inner part of this shoulder pad. This is going to be for the pack markings. We will also block in this knee pad with Mephiston Red. So simply thin down Mephiston Red. This will probably take two coats, maybe three. And all we're going to do is block in this entire area. Again, take your time. If you make any mistakes, just go back to your rust gray and touch it up. So I will complete these red areas. I'll let you know how many coats it took me. And then we'll show you what it looks like. With the Mephiston red dry, this is what it should look like. The next step, we're going to be painting the leathers. For this, we're going to mix two parts of Mournfang Brown to one part of Baden Black. Again, with a small artificial layer brush, we're just going to paint the belt and the holster. This should probably only take two coats as it's got some black in it. If it doesn't, don't be afraid to put a third coat. And again, if you make any mistakes, you've got the base coats to touch them up. I will paint these areas in and we will come back to show you what it looks like. With the brown leather base, this is what your model should look like. Again, if you make any mistakes, you can go back with base coats. I'll probably leave my base coats right till the end. The next step, we are going to use one part Bugman's to one part Cadian Flesh Tone and we are going to base coat the head. For this, I'll use the small artificial layer brush again, and it's just as simple as painting in the flesh area, being careful around that rust gray. This will take two coats. I'll complete this step and we will come back and show you what it looks like. This is how the skin should look after you've applied the 50-50 of Bugman's and Cadian. Next step is to apply straight Cadian in the same area over the, over the whole area. This is going to be our starting point for our flesh. Again, this will take two coats. So I will complete this step and then we will come back and show you what it looks like and move on to the next color. So after your Cadian flesh tone is dried, we are going to move on to the hair. For this step, you need Jocaro orange. We're going to use our small artificer layer brush again and just base coat the hair as well as his little goatee, his little goatee beard. So I will complete this step and then we'll move on to the next. So after you've applied two coats of Jocaro Orange, this is how your hair should look. The next step, we are going to move on to the Purity Seal. For this, you will need Rackarth Flesh to base coat the seals themselves. And then we're going to coat the wax with Screamer Pink. So be as tidy as you can. This will probably take two coats. 
I will paint these in and then we will come back and show you what it looks like. So with two coats of Screamer Pink and two coats of Rackarth Flesh, this is what the base coats should look like on your purity seals. Next, we will move on to this little wolf fur piece. What we're going to do is base coat this with gray sear. This will require two, possibly three coats. And again, just use your small artificial layer and be as careful as possible. I'll apply the two coats to this and then we will come back and show you what it looks like. So with the wolf fur dried, should look like this. Next, we are going to base the areas that will be brass or bronze with a base coat of XV88. So that's going to be the Aquila on the chest and this little bit of metal holding the top of the fur. Again, grab your small artificial layer brush. This may only require one coat of paint as it is sort of just a placeholder for the metallic itself. So we will paint these areas and I will come back and show you what it looks like when it's finished. With the XV88 dry, we're going to move on to the final base coat. This is going to be standard Mechanicus Grey. And this is all the areas that we plan on painting Lead Belcher. This is sort of just, again, a placeholder. So the areas we're going to focus on is this area in the gun holster, obviously the chainsaw, so the blades and the mechanical parts on the chainsaw. Areas on, on the pistol itself and the backpack. So I will base coat all these areas in standard mech and we will come back and I will show you what it's like. So after you have base coated with standard Mechanicus, that is all of the base coats done. The next step, we're going to focus on the armor itself. For this, we're going to start with a recessed shade of the Fang and a Baden Black equal parts. And you may want to add a little bit of Lamia Medium just to help it flow. I will use my extra small artificial layer brush to apply this. And you want to try and be as tidy as possible because then you don't need to tidy up much afterwards. But if you do, don't worry, just go back with your base coat and clean it up. So you're just going to apply it into all the recesses of the armor. I will finish this step and then we will come back and show you what it looks like after the tidy up. So with your recess shade finished on the blue armor, this is how your model will look. We've obviously done that on the arms, the backpack and the neck guard on the head. The next step, we are going to take Fen Rissian Grey and our small artificial layer brush. And we are going to apply a thick primary highlight. So all we're going to do is work around the whole model, adding a fairly chunky edge highlight around about that thickness. Yours may change in size just due to how thin your secondary highlight may be but I will work around the whole model like this and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. So after you finish the first highlight of Fenrisian Grey on all of the armor and tidy up with your rust gray, the next step is to apply a secondary highlight of blue horror. Now you add a touch of water to this and we're going to use our extra small artificial layer brush again. And what we want to do is just apply a thinner edge highlight, leaving a small amount of the previous highlight visible. 
this will help add a gradient and make this second highlight less extreme. So we will go around the whole model and complete this step. If you make a mistake, don't worry. Just go back to your Fenrisian Gray to touch it up. And we will show you what it looks like when it's finished. After you finish your blue horror edge highlight, this is how your model will look. Next step is to use your small artificer layer brush or extra small artificer layer brush. And we're going to apply a dot highlight of blue horror and white scar. So one to one. And you're just going to work around your model like this, just applying dots on all the edges of the armor. This doesn't actually take too long, so I'll complete these steps and then we will come back and start working on the pack markings. So once your dot highlights are finished, this is how your model will look. We will now move on to doing some pack markings. This one is optional, but I, I really like it. <clears throat> so what I've done is I have dotted out with gray lead, these little dots along the chainsaw here, three mil apart. So what we end up doing is making these little three millimeter triangles and you just block them in with Mephist and red, and then come back with your Uriel yellow and tighten them up. So I'll try and draw one for you. It's quite difficult. It's actually easier with a brush, but we'll start with this one. Don't worry if you make a mistake. This is why we're doing it in gray lead. And you can always sharpen it up when you start painting it on. So I just mark them all out like that and then block them in with the Mephiston Red. I will paint these other triangles on and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. With that step done, your chain sword should look like this. The next step, we are going to take Evil Sun Scarlet and our extra small artificer layer. We're going to add an edge highlight down here. We will also do the same to the red on the backpack here. So an edge highlight around here, as well as the knee. So we'll do two edge highlights on this. This will be the first edge highlight. So just apply a, a relatively thick edge highlight around the outside of your knee, as well as the other two areas I showed you. And we will come back and show you what it looks like. This is what it will look like after you have done your Evil Sun's edge highlight. Next step is to add the secondary highlight. For this, you will need Wild Rider Red and Fire Dragon Bright. We'll mix these equal parts, so one to one, and just add another thin edge highlight to this area. Don't worry if you mess up, just go back with your Evil Sun Scarlet and you can tidy it up. So you want to apply this edge highlight to those other two areas as well. I'll finish this off and then we will come back and show you what it looks like. With the second highlight added, the next step is to add the dot highlight. For this, it is just straight fire dragon bright. So we'll just be putting a dot right on the tip here and on the other side of the blade and also on the backpack, just on these edges here. After you've completed this step, we'll be adding a recess shade to the red. So I'll complete these and then we'll come back with the recess shade. With the dot highlights finished on the blade, this is what it looks like. We will now add a recess shade just around that bolt or rivet at the top 
of the sword. For this, you will need to mix one part Mephiston to one part Rhinox Hide with one part Lamian Medium. So just as careful as you can, just apply the paint around that large bolt and on the other side. And the other area we're going to use this is the red shoulder pad we, we based earlier. So as careful as possible, remember you can just go back with your base coat. We are going to just add a recess shade on the inside of the shoulder pad. So I will complete this step and then we'll come back and start painting on some more pack markings. After the recess shade has dried on your shoulder pad, we will start to add the black pack markings to the red areas we just painted. For this, we're going to do a simple design. Again, you could use the pencil to mark it out, but I'm just going to go and paint it straight on there. All we want to do is draw a line down the center of the knee pad, like so. This is using the small artificial layer brush. And then we're just going to turn this into a triangle, like so. So you can make a smaller triangle and then work your way up, but I'm pretty happy with the size this one is. It's a simple design. You can, you can go with a more elaborate one. You can just look up other pack designs. So we'll give this two coats of a bad and black, and we will paint the same pattern on the backpack and the red shoulder pad. I will finish this off and then we will come back and show you what it looks like. Once you have marked out your pack markings, the next step is to begin highlighting the black areas. So we will highlight underneath this knee pad on the backpack and then all the Under Armour here. So all these little ribs on the Under Armour and these here. So for this step, you're going to mix one part Abaddon to one part Hessian Grey. And this will be a three highlight step. So this first highlight will be quite thick. I'll just highlight this knee pad to give you an example of how thick it will be. Just like this. And then when you're highlighting the Under Armour, you basically want to highlight the whole raised area. Just like that. So I will go through the whole model and finish off those highlights and come back and show you what it looks like. So after you have applied that first chunky highlight, you can see it here, it's quite subtle. We'll move on to the second highlight. For this, you will just need Hessian Grey and we'll be using our small artificial layer brush again. Simply apply your second highlight on top of the previous one, leaving a little bit of the previous highlight shown. So we'll look something like this. And then do the same with the Under Armour as well. So you're just trying to hit the top of those edges there, like so. I will do all of these highlights and show you what it looks like. With the Eschen Grey Highlight Dry, this is how your model would look. The next step is the final highlight for the gray. For this, you will need Dawnstone and your small artificial layer brush again. And we're just going to add a very, very thin edge highlight, leaving a small amount of that Eschen Gray edge highlight. So just like this, sometimes it doesn't cover very well. So you can just go back over it. It's a bit better. And then 
for the Under Armour, you're not going to highlight the whole area. Just highlight the center of it, like so. I'll move around the whole model and do all these highlights, and then we will come back and show you what it looks like. The final step for the gray is to add an administratum gray dot. Now, we're going to add this to the Under Armour, essentially in a line. So you just add a dot and then try and follow the same line on the next bit of Under Armour, like so. And then we can do the same on the back here near the legs. So we just want to follow this line down here. So we just simply dot and just follow the same line down. I'll do this to the rest of the model and then we will come back and start work on the yellow. With the administratum grey dots finished, your model will look like this. We'll now move on to the yellow. The first step in the yellow is to apply a recess shade to it. For this, we will mix one part square brown to one part lamium medium. And just like the other recess shades, we simply want to focus on areas like this. And this. So you want to go around the whole model, all the yellow areas like the chain sword, the recessed areas on the shoulder pad, and try and be as clean as possible. It will limit the amount you need to tidy up. But if you do mess up, don't worry about it. You can just go back with your, your year real yellow and fix it up. With the scrag brown recess shade finished, this is how the gun casing will look. The next step is to add the first highlight. For this, you will need two parts year real yellow to one part dawn yellow, and we'll be using our small artificial airbrush and adding quite a thick highlight as we will be adding a second highlight. So around about this thickness, don't worry if you go over the rivets, you can just come back with your recess shade and wash around them. I will highlight the rest of the gun casing as well as the chainsaw, and we will move on to the second highlight. With the first edge highlight finished, it is now time to move on to the second edge highlight. For this, we'll be mixing four parts dawn yellow to one part Uriel yellow. And just like all the other edge highlight steps, you want to apply a thin edge highlight and leave some of the previous color showing. So just like this, you want to work your way around the model. Don't be worried if you make a mistake, you can go back with your previous mix and just touch up the mistakes. Just take your time and be patient. I will finish this off and we'll come back and do the dot highlight for the yellow. The second last step for the yellow is to add your dot highlight. For this, you're going to mix one part of dawn yellow to one part white scar. And just like the armor, we are going to dot the corners of the gun casing like so. After this, you will want to go back with your scrag brown and just put a small recess shade around your rivets and then apply this dot highlight to your rivets as well. So I'll do both those steps and we'll come back, show you what the casing looks like, and then we'll move on to the brown leathers of the holster and the belt. With the dot highlights finished and the scrag brown washed around the rivets. This is how your gun casing will look. We will now move on to the holster and the leathers. For this step, you just want Mornfang Brown 
and your small artificer layer. And we will add the first of two highlights. So this will be quite a thick highlight. And you just want to go around the whole casing or holster of the gun. There's also these raised parts you can sort of see there in the light. So we'll just put a line straight down that. And the same with this one here. We'll also do the belt. So I will go around the model and complete these edge highlights. We will show you what it looks like and come back to do the second highlight. The next step for painting the brown leathers is to add a death claw brown highlight. This one will be a little bit different. I like to call this a broken highlight. So it's a bit more like a, a dot and a line highlight, almost a Morse code with edge highlights. So I'll give you an example of what it looks like. So you start off at the top here and then just work your way down. Just sort of slowly dot it and then line and then dot. You, you don't want a pattern. Try and be as random as possible. And with your death claw brown, you also want to add some micro scratches. So just tiny, tiny little scratches. Just like this. So you want to add that broken edge highlight all the way around the model. So anywhere you've put that morning frame brown. I will do that and come back, show you what the leathers look like, and we will move on to the purity seals. With the leathers finished, we will now move on to the purity seal. So we will start with the parchment, and on top of your Rakarth flesh, we will apply some horizontal lines of pallid witch flesh. This is to try and show that it is, is more a parchment than a solid color. So all you want to do is load your extra small artificer up and just paint a whole bunch of horizontal lines like this. And then you want to rotate your model and hit the other parchment from here. Just being careful. I will finish these steps and show you what it looks like. After you apply your pallid witch flesh, the next step is to add some white scar to that mix. So it'll be a one-to-one -one mix, white scar and pallid witch flesh. Repeat the same process, the horizontal lines, but only hit the higher points of the purity seal leaving some of the previous color visible. This is a little bit more subtle than the previous step, but it does make a big difference. You also want to do an edge highlight along the side of the purity seal, like this. I will finish the other purity seal and come back, show you what it looks like. After your pallid witch flesh and white scar layer, you will use pure white scar and this will just be to run an edge highlight on the purity seal itself. And then a few random lines just on the highest points. After this, we've got one more step to complete the parchment. So I will finish this and come back and show you what that step is. The final step for the parchment is to add some Agrax Earthshade. We will run this down the recess here. And then you also want to use a bit like a glaze and drag it up towards the top of the wax just to add a bit of age to these purity seals so they're not so fresh. We'll move on to the wax next, and after the wax is completed, 
we will do the tricky part, which is the text. So on top of the Screamer pink wax, we are going to wash that with the traditional null oil. You can let this pull a little bit if you want. We'll let this dry and come back for the next step. The next step is to re-layer some Screamer pink here, but you want to leave some of that known oil in the recesses, simply like this. We will let this dry and then move on to the next step. With the Screamer pink dry, we are going to make a mixture of pink horror and Screamer pink one-to-one -one and repeat the process. Just leaving a little bit of the previous color showing through, like so. Once this dries, we will add the final step of the wax. So I'll come back and show you what it looks like after this dries. Finally, adding some Screaming Skull to your mix. So it'll be one part Screaming Skull, one part Screamer Pink, and one part Pink Horror. Just add some very, very minor dots just to the top. After this dries, we will come through and do the text. Mixing Abaddon Black and Rhinox Hide and using your extra small artificial layer brush. You want to make a series of very, very small lines of text, like so. Just being as gentle as possible. You don't really want to thin this paint down as you want to fully control it. So that's what your text should look like when you complete it. I will do the small amount of text that's visible here. Then we will move on to painting the face. With a mixture of Reichland Flesh Shade and Limey and Medium, you are going to wash the whole face. Don't worry if you get this on the hair, as we need to wash the hair as well and layer it up. So this is just going to help us pick out the high points of the skin. I will finish applying this color and come back and show you what it looks like when it dries. With the Reichland Flesh Shade Dry, this is how your skin will look. Next, we will wash the hair, just in case we need to make some touch-ups. For this, you will need the classic glaze blood letter. So you are simply going to apply it all over the hair and the beard, trying to be as careful as possible, just so you don't need to do touch-ups. I will complete this step and we will come back and start to layer the skin back up and the hair. With the glaze dry, we will start to layer up the skin. So the first layer we're going to do is to layer back up with Cadian flesh tone, leaving the previous color in the recesses. So I will work around the model, painting in these areas, and we will come back and show you what it looks like when it's completed. After the Cadian dries, we add some Kislev flesh to it, so it'll be a one-to-one -one with Kislev flesh and Cadian flesh tone. And again, we're just going to layer up, working on the higher points of the skin, leaving some of the previous color visible. So I will finish this step 
and then we'll come back and show you what it looks like. After that step, we're going to apply straight Kislev flesh with the same process, leaving some of the previous color visible. Hitting the high points of the face. So I will complete this step. We'll come back and then there is one highlight for this skin. Before we come through with the highlight on the skin, we are going to thin down some original Karaberg Crimson and just add a little bit of a shade to these scars. You can also do the same to studs or any other type of mechanism on the skin just to show that it's been irritated a little bit. So we'll do the same on this. And this little area at the back here. We'll let this dry and then we will come back for the final step of the skin. And then we'll move on to the hair. After the Caribou Crimson has dried, we will add our final highlight to the skin. For this step, you're going to mix one part pallid witch flesh with one part kislev and simply hit the very highest points of the skin, such as the forehead, the brow, and the nose, your lips and the cheekbones. So I will go through and highlight all those to try and get this model to stop spinning. And then we will come back and start with that hair. So after you have completed the final highlight on the skin, we will be adding our first layer to the hair. For this, you will need Troll Slayer Orange, and we are simply going to pick out the highest points of the hair, being very, very careful. Once you have done all the hair, move on to the next step, which is doing the same thing with Fire Dragon Bright. So I will complete this, show you what it looks like, and then we'll move on to the next step. With your Troll Slayer Orange dried, now we move on to Fire Dragon Bright. And you want to highlight the same areas you did before, trying to leave a little bit of the Troll Slayer visible. So this is going to be very, very thin. Once you complete this step, the hair is done for the model. So we will move on to the eyes, which can be quite difficult. But um, we will. We'll try our best. Now that your hair is completed, we will move on to the eyes. For the first step, you want to take some Abaddon Black and put a very small amount on your brush. And we're going to try and paint the sockets in with Abaddon Black. The best way to do this is little horizontal strokes instead of trying to stab at the socket itself. Just take your time and it should look something like this. I will paint the other one in and then we'll move on to the next step, which is painting the whites of the eyes with all earth and gray. After you have applied the abaddon black into the sockets, the next step is to take some all earth and gray and paint the whites of the eyes. You want to leave a small amount of the Abaddon Black surrounding it. And again, we're going to use those same horizontal motions till you make contact with the, the eye. Like so. 
The key is to leave a little bit of bad and black so it's a nice little outline around the eye. I'll paint the other white of the eye in and come back and show you what it looks like. The final step for the eyes is to come back with a small amount of abandon black to paint the pupils. Now, you want to attempt to put these slightly central to the eye, but if anything, a little bit more to the middle of the face, just because you don't want your eyes to both be looking outwards. It can look a little funny. So that's what it should look like when you paint one of the pupils in. I'll try and do the other one. If you muck these up, just come back with a little bit of your oil and gray and just touch them up. There we go, the two pupils in, that's what your face should look like. The next step, we will start to finish the details of the mouth. The first step to painting the mouth, we're going to take the classic null oil and you're going to simply apply that wash in the whole mouth there. Take a little bit out because it's just pooling a little bit. We'll get that to dry and then we'll come back with the classic caribou crimson and we do the exact same step. We'll let this dry and we'll come back. With the Abaddon Black dried, the next step is to take some classic caribou crimson and just apply it into the mouth like we did before. Once this dries, we will paint the teeth in and the head will be finished. So I'll let this dry and we'll come back. To finish the head off, we are simply going to take Ulth and Grey again. This time, we're going to try and pick out the teeth. This model has teeth on the top here. He doesn't have any on the bottom. His tongue is sticking out. So just add a small amount of Ulth and to your brush. Sometimes it can dry out. You put that small amount on. So if it does, you can just go back to your palette. And we're going to just pick the teeth out, like so. The next step, we will move on to the fur pelt on his belt. And after that is finished, we move on to the metallics. The first step to painting in the wolf pelt is to make a wash of Steel Legion Drab and Lamian Medium. So one part Steel Legion Drab to about four to five parts Lamian Medium. We're just going to wash the whole fur itself. The following steps will all be the same ratios, just with a different paint. So the next step will be with Deathclaw Brown and four to five parts Lamian Medium. You just want to let this dry in between steps though. So we'll let this dry and come back with the death claw brown. With the steel legion drab mix dried, we'll move on to the death claw brown dry, um, step. And for this, we are just going to apply it at the lower part of the fur, just leaving a slight gradient of that steel legion. So once this dries, we'll move on to the next step and that will be doing the same thing, but with more Vang Brown. With the Death Claw Brown wash dried, we'll move on to the Morn Fang Brown wash. With the same process, highlighting the lower part of the fur, but leaving a small amount of the Death Claw Brown. Again, we need this to dry before we move on to the next step. So we'll let that dry and make a wash of Abaddon Black for the next step. With the Morn Fang Brown wash dried, we'll move on to the Abaddon Black wash. Again, focusing on the lower part of the fur. Like so.
Once this is dried, we'll move on to the final step of the fur and we will wash it with traditional Agrax earth shade just to sort of bring all the colors together. So we'll let this dry and then come back. After the Abaddon black is dried, we'll move on to washing the whole fur with a mixture of Agrax earth shade to Lamian medium, equal parts. So it's a one to one. You want to wash the whole fur and this should help blend those colors together better. You can be quite liberal with it. Just let it sort of pick out all the detail of that fur. Once this dries, we'll move on to some transfers. And after the transfers, we'll varnish and start on the final step, which will be the metallics. With the Agrax Earthshade dry, this is how your fur will look. Next, we will move on to transfers. We've got the Leviathan transfer sheet here. So we'll be cutting out one of these chapter icons here for the shoulder pad. And then I'm thinking this cool little icon here, and we'll place this on his grave. I will cut these out and then I will show you how to apply some transfers. After you cut your transfers out, you want to have them soak in some water. For this, I just use the back of a base. And what you want to try and do is center the icon in your shoulder pad. This can take a little bit of fiddling around, especially if you're a perfectionist like myself. Once it has been placed, I just wanted to let it sit for a bit. Have some of that water dry out. And then use a product called Microsol. Now this, as you can read, softens the decal and it will help it curve around that shoulder pad. Anyone that's applied transfers to a Space Marine shoulder pad will know that it can be quite difficult to get them to follow that shape. We've also got the little icon up in the corner here. See if we can pick it up and we will just place it on the grave down here. Like so. We'll let these dry for a bit and then I will show you how to apply the microsol. Once the transfer has dried off a bit, you simply want to take some of your microsol on a brush and apply it over the whole inside area of the shoulder pad. Now your transfer can move whilst doing this, which is okay. Just make sure you reposition it. And all you have to do is let Microsol do its thing and it will help it shape around the shoulder pad. If it doesn't do it first try, you can just come back with the Microsol and repeat this step. So I will reposition this and just allow the Microsol to do its thing. As you can see, applying the Microsol has helped this transfer contour to all the curves. Our next step is to apply a varnish. So you still want to keep the model in sub-assemblies and we'll be using a product called Tamiya TS80 Flat Clear. So I will blue tack all these parts down to some cardboard and varnish it. And then we can move on to the metallics. With your Tamiya TS80 Flat Clear applied, this is how your model will look. So it will map down all the areas and bring everything together. The next step is to start applying the metallics. The first metallic we will apply is lead belcher. And we are going to pick out all those areas we based in standard Mechanicus Grey. So areas like this and a lot of areas on your weapons. So like the chainsaw and your, your bolt pistol. So simply use 
a small artificer brush and some lead belcher, being very careful on this step because it's hard to go back from here. And we are going to paint in all the areas that are standard mech. We don't generally thin down the metallics either. You basically want to put it onto your wet palette and paint from there. So I'll paint in all these areas and show you what it looks like when we come back. With your areas base coated with lead belcher, the next step is to simply apply some classic null oil over the whole area. Again, try and be as careful as possible because it's hard to touch up the previous steps. I will continue the rest of these and we will move on to the next step, which will be highlighting the metal. Once your null oil has dried, the next step is to add a single edge highlight with storm hose silver to all those lead belcher areas. Again, being very careful, you don't want too much paint on your brush. Just take your storm hose silver and work around the model and edge highlight all the areas. So I will complete this step. Then we will move on to the Aquila, which is the final painted step of this process. Then we will move on to assembling the model. With your Stormhost Silver Edge Highlight finished, this is how it will look. We will now move on to painting in the Aquila. For this step, you will need Cycorax bronze, and we are going to simply paint these areas that we base coated in XV88. This is a layer, so it will probably take two coats just to get a nice base for us to start with. So we'll paint in the Aquila, and we will paint in this little part that attaches the fur to the belt. I'll do two coats and then we'll come back and show you what it looks like. We have two coats of Cycorax bronze on your Aquila. This is what it will look like. We will now add a shade of the original Seraphim Sepia. So we're just going to coat the whole area with this, like so. You can be quite liberal with it. And we'll do the same with the little attachment down here. We'll get this to dry. And then we will come back and do a few highlights. With your Seraphim Sepia dry, this is how your model will look. We're now going to apply an edge highlight of Canoptic Alloy. So take your time and just try and edge highlight every little feather, like so. We will then add a single dot highlight of Stormhose Silver at the end, but I will complete these edge highlights and show you what it looks like. With the Canoptic Alloy Edge Highlight done, we will move on to the final painting step which is to just apply a very, very small dot of Stormhose Silver just at the edge of each of these feathers of the Aquila. After this, we will move on to assembling the model and then gluing it on the base. With your Stormhose Silver dots completed, the model is finished, painted. So now we need to move on to assembly. For this, I get a scalpel and I carefully, very, very carefully, shave back the contact points. So for an instance, that would be shaving this sort of area where the arm would connect. Now you don't need to shave back the whole thing, just the areas that will make contact. So I'll shave back this, and then on the chainsaw, I would, shave back this area here. 
and then use plastic glue to assemble it. So I will do the assembly. We'll come back and show you what the model looks like fully assembled, and then we'll glue him to his base. With assembly complete and super gluing him to a base, this is how your Space Wolf should look. Hopefully you have found this tutorial useful. If you have, please like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for future long format tutorials on Marines. Thank you.